Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Saturday of the week of Pentecost 16, the reading Hermit Tilike, T-H-I-E-L-I-C-K-E, 1908-1985. I so love this. Oh, just listen to this. It is glorious. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy conversation and not much discussions at any rate. So, the man who studies theology, and especially he who studies dogmatics, might watch carefully whether he increasingly does not think in the third rather than the second person. You know what I mean by that, this transition from one to the other level of thought, from a personal relationship with God to a merely technical reference, usually is exactly synchronized with the moment that I no longer can read the word of Scripture as a word to me, but only as the object of exegetical endeavors. This is the first step toward the worst and most widespread minister's disease. For the minister frequently can hardly expound the text as a letter which has been written to him, but he reads the text under the impulse of the question, how would it be used in a sermon? I have been a minister and say this also to myself, we might remember that Anselm began his demonstration of God in his prologue with a prayer and that his dogmatics were therefore prayed dogmatics. This extraordinary fact would be understood altogether wrongly if seen as only an edifying preamble and therefore a sign of a special kind of piety. Anselm is here looking for nothing else than the expression of something that theologically is strongly relevant. A theological thought can breathe only in the atmosphere of dialogue with God. Essentially, the theological method is characterized by the fact that it takes into account that God has spoken and that now what God has spoken is to be understood and answered. But it can only be understood when I, one, recognize that what has been said is directed to me and two, become involved in formulating a reply. Only out of this dialogue is a theological method comprehensible. Consider that the first time someone spoke of God in the third person, and therefore no longer with God, but about God, was that very moment when the question resounded, did God really say? Check Genesis 3.1. This fact ought to make us think. Contrast with this, the crucified Jesus out of the uttermost darkness of the abandonment by God does not speak to men, does not complain about this God who has abandoned him. He speaks to him at this very moment in the second person. He addresses him as my God and even expresses his complaint in a word of God, so that as it were the circuit between him and the Father is complete. This observation, too, should make us think. And the closing prayer, Wilhelm Elof, and I have no idea how this might conceivably be pronounced, V-I-S-S-E-R-T, space, capital H-O-O-F-T, 1900-1985. O God, creator of all things, you are perpetually renewing the face of the world and have created us new in Jesus Christ. Grant that in our worship of you and communion with you, your created energy may more and more flood our lives 
so that we may play our part in the fulfillment of your purpose, which transcends all that we can think or understand. Amen.